Hello. Welcome to Diverse's channel in this video, the incredible story of Vlad III's life. Why was he the greatest enemy of mankind during the Ottoman era? I hope you liked this video it was not compatible with human memory at all. His creations are one of the most frightening symbols of today's world. Their biggest enemies were the Ottoman Turks during the time of Muhammad the Conqueror. Please stay with us until the end of the video. Early years, Vlad III, or Vlad Dracula, was born in Transylvania in 1431 to a noble family, the House of Basarab. His father, Vlad II, was a member of the Order of the Dragon and his mother's name is unknown. He had two older brothers, Mercia and Radu, and a younger brother, Aluthsia. Vlad III spent his early years with his father, Vlad II, and his extended family in Transylvania. Vlad III was sent to study in Adirne, Turkey in 1444. While in Turkey he learned about warfare and the Ottoman military tactics that would come to define his rule. After his father's death in 1447, Vlad III returned home to Transylvania to claim his inheritance. In 1456, after successfully defeating a Hungarian army at the Battle of Kodli, Vlad III became the ruler of Wallachia and took on the title of Voivode, Prince. His rule began with brutal tactics including impaling enemies on stakes, earning him the name Vlad the Impaler. He also enacted laws to combat corruption and raise taxes on the wealthy. He spent much of his time defending Wallachia against the Ottomans and Hungarian armies. Rise to Power Vlad III began his rise to power in 1448, when his father, Vlad II Dracul, was inducted into the Order of the Dragon, a prestigious military and social order. This led to Vlad II Dracul being granted the title of Voivode, military leader, of Wallachia. In 1456, upon the death of his father, Vlad III assumed the throne at the age of 17. In order to secure his power in the region, Vlad III conducted a series of campaigns against his enemies in Wallachia and Transylvania. During this time, he also forged alliances with powerful Hungarian rulers and cemented his reputation as a ruthless and efficient leader. His tactics of using cruelty and intimidation quickly spread fear throughout the region, leading to him being referred to as the Impaler. Vlad III's reputation for ruthlessness and violence eventually led to him being recognized as an important leader in Eastern Europe. This, in turn, brought him significant support from foreign rulers, including the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II. This recognition enabled Vlad III to expand his reign and increase his influence in the region. By 1462, he had become the most powerful ruler in all of Wallachia. Reign of Terror During his reign, Vlad III earned a reputation as a ruthless ruler and was given the name Vlad the Impaler, Vlad Sepish. He implemented a variety of cruel punishments such as public impaling, skinning, boiling, and blinding. It is thought that he executed an estimated 80,000 to 100,000 people during his reign. In 1459, Vlad led an attack against the Ottoman Empire that would become known as the Night Attack. He burned crops and destroyed villages in order to draw out the Turks. When they eventually confronted him at the fortress of Giurgiu, he killed thousands of Ottoman soldiers by impaling them on long stakes. This brutal display of terror is believed to have ended the war in his favor. Vlad was also known for his brutal treatment of those accused of crimes or acts of disloyalty. He often had them dragged through the streets before publicly executing them. He used other punishments such as being thrown into pits filled with venomous snakes or tied to horses and dragged through the streets. He also supposedly roasted people alive and threw victims over high walls. Vlad's reputation for cruelty spread throughout Europe, and it is said that even Pope Pius II called him the greatest scourge of God. However, despite his reputation, some historians argue that he wasn't as bad as popular legend suggests and may have only used these extreme measures in response to a genuine threat to the country's safety. Whatever the case may be, it is certain that Vlad III's reign of terror will forever be remembered in history. Later years Vlad III's later years were spent in relative seclusion, likely due to the psychological toll of his reign. After being deposed, he was imprisoned by Matthias Corvinus and eventually released in 1475. He returned to Wallachia with a small force to regain his throne, but was defeated by Basarab Lyota Salbatran. Forced into exile, Vlad sought refuge in Moldova, where he was received as a guest of Stephen the Great. While staying at the Moldavian court, Vlad wrote an extensive list of grievances against the boyars of Wallachia. In 1476, Vlad made another attempt to regain the Wallachian throne. This time, he was able to raise an army of supporters and take back control of the country. However, his rule was short-lived and he was overthrown after a few months. He attempted to retake power one more time in 1477, but failed again and eventually disappeared from historical records. Though his later years were shrouded in mystery, 
it is believed that he died around 1477 or 1478. The exact cause and location of his death are still unknown. His legacy, however, remains, many consider him to be a national hero of Romania, commemorated by monuments and statues throughout the country. He has also inspired books, movies, and other works of art. Legacy Vlad III has left a lasting legacy, both positive and negative, in Romania and beyond. He is celebrated by some as a national hero for his fight against the Ottoman Empire, while others view him as a ruthless tyrant. His deeds have inspired many works of art, including novels, plays, and films. His image is still used in Romanian culture today, and his story has become an important part of Romanian history and folklore. Vlad's name has been linked to the vampire character Dracula, first popularized by Bram Stoker in 1897. While Vlad had nothing to do with vampires, the association of his name with the mythical creature has added to the mystique of Vlad's story. Vlad III will remain an iconic figure in history, remembered for centuries to come. He has become a symbol of courage, strength, and a passionate fight against oppression, no matter the cost. To get other undiscovered secrets, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like the video and share it with your friends. Thank you.